Calculus time. Calculus, or just calc, also known as the biggest barrier to cross over to the pure math zone, is the mathematical study of change. Specifically, it means change over the course of something. Most often, this something is time, but it can be anything, like distance or time. Let x be time, and y be the thing we want to measure. For a graph like y equals x, for every one we move to the right, we move one up. So the slope is one. But what if we had a wacky graph, like this? Well, we can't answer that, but we can answer for a graph like this. But first, we need to learn about limits. Limits are pretty boring when the expression follows usual rules of math. Limits are a way of making exceptions to rules. For example, we can't divide by zero, but with limits, we can divide by zero. Let's write out this limit as x approaches zero of five divided by x. Technically, we're not dividing by zero. We're dividing by a number so small that it might as well be zero. This is what's called infinitesimally small. So what's five divided by a ridiculously small number? Well, if we divide by a small number, we end up with a big number. So the result is officially a really big number. We can't really say infinity is the answer, but infinity is the answer. Now that we've learned about limits, let's go back to graphs. We want to know what the slope is at any given point on the graph. This is known as instantaneous slope because it changes to something else at the very next point on the graph. Let's look at a graph like y equals x squared. At x equals 0, we can figure out the slope by looking at the points just to the left and right. To the left, the curve goes down, so the slope is negative to the left. To the right, the curve goes up, so the slope is positive to the right. So we know that the slope in between the two must be 0, since the graph is continuous. Continuous just simply means that it's possible to draw the graph without ever picking up the pencil that you used to draw it. The graph on the left is continuous, the graph on the right is not. Any polynomial expression creates a continuous graph, y equals x squared being one example. But what if we wanted to get the slope of any point on the graph? To do this, we take the limit as x approaches 0 of the f a function evaluated at x plus h all divided by x plus h. That's a crazy way of saying we find the slope at that point. Now, the arithmetic involved with calculating this limit is very important, but it takes forever and gets old very fast. Instead, let's use some easy examples to take the derivative of y equals x squared. First, you look at each individual term of an equation. Here we have y and x squared. If the term is a constant or has no variables, it becomes zero. If a term has a variable in it, we reduce its power by one and then multiply it by that original power as a constant factor. So x squared, when derived, becomes 2x. 2 is the constant because 2 was the original power, and the power becomes 1 because that's 1 less than 2. Finally, after deriving a term, if the result is not 0, you must add an indicator that you have derived it. For example, y, when derived, becomes dy, read as the derivative of y. x squared, when derived, becomes 2x dx, 2x from the rules we mentioned before, and dx as an indicator that this term has been derived. Another important note, d is not a variable. It is just a letter put in front of another variable to indicate they've been derived. So our final equation is dy equals 2x dx. We can clean this up one more time by dividing both sides of the equation by dx. This gives us dy dx equals 2x. This is read as the derivative of y in terms of x is 2x. So now, what do we do with 2x? Well, we can now plug in any value for x, and we can find out the slope of the graph y equals x squared. So if x equals 7, then 2x equals 14. So the slope of the graph at x equals 7 is 14. The intermediate value here pretty much says that if I draw any continuous curve, point out where the biggest and smallest y values are, the graph must contain all the y values in between. If that wasn't true, limbo would be a really easy game. Just walk through the missing part of the stick. The mean value here states that if I have a continuous curve and a section of the curve is differentiable, then at that section of the curve, the weighted average slope is the slope of the single line between the two points. Finally, let's talk about integration. Integration is the inverse of differentiating. Where differentiating is taking something whole and chopping up into an infinite amount of small pieces, integration is taking an infinite amount of small pieces and putting them together to make something whole. To integrate, we do the inverse of differentiating. Instead of multiplying by the original power and decreasing the power by 1, we increase the power by 1 and divide by that newly created power. So 2x, when integrated, becomes x squared because the power is increases by 1 and then we divide by that new power. Hmm. It's almost like doing an operation and then doing its inverse doesn't change the result. Wow, what a surprise. That's exactly what the fundamental theorem of calculus says, that if I take the derivative of the integral of something, then it's just that something. There's just one more thing to keep in mind. It doesn't work the other way around. The integral of the derivative of something does not necessarily equal that something. Why? Well, remember how the derivative of a constant is zero? Well, that means that the integral of anything poofs a constant out of nowhere, which we don't know. We can know, however, if we know the span over which we calculate the integral, which is the definite integral, as opposed to the indefinite integral, which gives us that constant we don't know about. Congratulations, you now know calculus.